It's officially 7.30 a.m. May 15th, the day that I leave, and I just finished packing. Hey guys, my eight month backpacking slash photography trip to Europe and Southeast Asia leaves tomorrow morning and I could not be more excited, but it's almost 10 p.m. and I still haven't packed, so I figured we could do it together. As I sort of figure it out myself, I'll show you what I'm bringing and how I'm gonna manage to fit it all in my bag and keep it organized. I'm gonna be focusing mostly on photography gear, but I'll touch on everything else I'm bringing as well. And I wanna go into how packing for a trip like this might be a little bit different for a photographer or anyone who needs to carry some gear with them. So if you're interested in downloading my full packing list, I'll link it below. So first things first, let's start with the bag. I'm gonna be packing in the Shimoda X70 and I won't spend too much time on this because I'm gonna be posting another video specifically about the best backpacks for photographers going on backpacking style trips. But let me just say, this thing is an absolute beast. It's a pretty huge bag, especially with the roll top extended, but if you need to carry a good amount of gear, I really haven't found a better option out there. I'll go into the features of this bag a little bit more when I'm packing it to show you why it's really an ideal bag for a photographer to keep your gear organized and safe. That said, at this size, I probably won't be able to carry this thing onto a lot of airplanes. So that is why I have this 28 liter day pack from Matador. And once again, I spent way too much time looking for the perfect backpack and this literally just arrived today, the day before the trip, but it is perfect. Hopefully it holds up to my expectations. And the perfect thing about this pack is that that it's totally compressible so even when I do need to carry my big pack I can just clip this to the outside and it doesn't add much size or weight. Now moving on to what's going to go inside my big pack. So I will say that I've spent a ton of time researching and considering every item that's going to go in here to make sure it's absolutely necessary both to live and create the work that I want to create while I'm away and is as lightweight and compact as possible. As you can probably see a lot of this stuff is actually still in boxes because I just picked it up over the last couple of days so I'm going to get that stuff open now and then we can get to packing. So this one I'm excited about, <laughs> just in time for the trip. So let's get this thing open. Cut myself. You know what, it's definitely bigger than I expected, uh, thicker at least, so we're gonna see how this is gonna fit in my bag. Maybe I don't bring the case, we'll see. Oh, there it is, check it out, that is Super light, so why is this friggin' case so heavy? Anyways, next. In this box, we got uh, really excited about this one. This is the sunglasses from a company called Go Wood that I'm gonna be working with while I travel, taking some photos and videos for them, and uh, All right, so I think I have everything I need, but all my stuff sort of just sprawled all over the floor here. So uh, I'm gonna start to get my shit together and I'll see you when I'm a bit more organized. All right, so I gotta be a bit quiet because it's like the middle of the night now, but I've finally finished laying out all my stuff. I've kind of separated everything into different categories. So over here I have toiletries and clothing and over here I have some photography equipment or mostly photography equipment and some miscellaneous items as well as some stuff from some of the brands I'm gonna be shooting. But now that it's all spread out here, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna pack it up into my bag. Seems like a lot of stuff, so I'm not sure how it's gonna fit, but we'll have to make it work. So anyway, so I'll see you guys in a couple hours. Officially 7.30 a.m. May 15th, the day that I leave, and I just finished packing. It took me a little bit longer than I thought. Yes, I did stay up all night, uh, but I think I finally got it figured out. And now I'm gonna take it all out to show you guys exactly how I did it. And uh, I gotta do it quickly so I have time to leave for my flight. So I'm actually gonna cover my carry-on first because that's where I'm gonna be carrying my photography gear for now, at least until I land. And I'll tell you a bit about how I'm gonna transfer it later. So this is my carry-on for Matador. And this is my personal item, which is just my camera cube in a little case. This is where I'm gonna be carrying all my more sensitive gear that I can't put in my check bag, which is my bigger bag. As I said, it's 70 liters, so unfortunately I can't take it as a carry-on item. All right, so let's check out what's in here. First things first, the most important thing that would usually be in my camera cube is my camera, but it's being used to film this video. And then next I've got my remote for my drone. And of course also I've got the drone, which is the DJI 
Air 2. Really excited to try it out in some of the really cool like landscapes and mountainy areas, especially in Europe that I'm gonna be in pretty soon. So next I've got my variable ND filter. This is a four stop variable ND filter from Polar Pro and uh, it's the 82 millimeter size for my Canon 24-70 and I've also got a step up ring here which is kind of a ridiculous step up ring. It's 82 to I think 43 millimeters for my 16 millimeter pancake lens. In here also for the drone, I've got some extra propellers. This doesn't need to be protected, it's just in there for convenience, but I like to have it in there. This is just some cleaning supplies for like lenses, sensors, really any camera part that I need to clean, I can get done with what's in that bag. Next, I have got, again, just for convenience, doesn't need to be protected, but my Peak Design Leash, which is their thinnest neck strap that they make. From Peak Design, I've also got the wrist strap. And I did have the uh, Peak Design clip, which I really would have loved to bring on this trip, but unfortunately it just broke. Next up, I've got my memory card wallet, which is in here because of course I wanna keep that nice and secure. This is just the case for my EF to RF converter because I'm still using the EF uh, 24 to 70 lens, so I need this for my Canon R5. That's just about it for this case. Again, my camera is usually in there, so it's usually a little bit more full, but for now, it's not too bad. So moving on to the carry-on from Matador, I've got in here a bunch of loose items at the top. So I've got a notebook, which I'm definitely gonna be journaling a lot on this trip. Got some medication. In here, I've just got a Think Tank cable management pouch, which, conveniently has cables inside it, as well as some hard drives. I've got a converter in here for like USB, uh, HDMI, ethernet, RGB, really whatever I need. Got my CF Express Type B card reader. Got two SSD hard drives. These are Samsung T7s with two terabytes each. I plan to use a lot of uh, storage while I travel with photos and videos. So hopefully this is enough. And then everything else in here is just like little charging cubes, cables, um, travel converters for Europe. I've got the cube for my MacBook charger. Basically the only other thing I have in this main pocket of this bag is two big items. So the first one is my laptop, which is heavy as shit. So the last thing in the main pocket of this bag, which is really taking up most of the space in this bag is the case for my Ronin RS2, which if I can even get it out of here. I've also stuffed a bunch of other shit in here. I'm actually gonna take this out of here. So this is my battery, portable battery charger, battery bank, portable charger. Portable charger. This is my portable charger from Anchor. Um, this has like six iPhone charges in it. I actually bought it because I thought you could charge a laptop, which is not true, but it's still pretty cool. This is the RS2 Pro Combo. Uh, it includes the Raven Eye and the Follow Focus and a bunch of other accessories, which I probably won't actually need. Of course, I've got the gimbal itself and batteries, batteries, batteries. I got the batteries for the drone, batteries for the camera, batteries for the gimbal itself. You're not really supposed to put them in check luggage and I'm carrying this on, so uh, nice and tidy and convenient. And also in here, I have a lens because it just fit nice and conveniently in the corner of this case. This is the 16 millimeter lens I was talking about. This is a 16 millimeter RF pancake lens. It's super small, super light, pretty cheap also. So I picked this one up to bring as a second lens in case I wanna go even wider than the 24 to 70. But to be honest, I, I plan on shooting 90% of the time with the 24 to 70. That's that for the DJI RS2 Pro Combo. I picked this up to replace my Ronin S because it's about half the weight and I've heard really cool things about the functionality about this. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to try it out. It's actually my first time using it on this trip, which is not something I recommend, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do when uh, you're in a bit of a time crunch. What else we got in here? Of course, on one side on the water bottle holder, I've got the Joby. Uh, Gorillapod, this is the 3K Pro. And on the other side, I've got my water bottle from Simple Modern. This is another brand that I'm gonna be working with. So clip to the outside, I've got my compressible hip sack or like a fanny pack from Mech. Probably gonna actually take this off and use it for like my passport and wallet and phone when I'm at the airport. So I've just got a couple of small things in this outer pocket here. I've got sleep mask and got earplugs in there somewhere. Yeah, I've got earplugs, so 
This is so that I can go to sleep on the plane because like I said, I uh, didn't sleep last night because I was packing for so long. So I'm definitely gonna need to sleep on the plane. A couple of packs of gum again for the plane. My little mini travel toothpaste and toothbrush. And uh, that's just about it for my carry on. So as you can probably tell, packing for a trip like this as a photographer creates a bit of a dilemma. See, the issue is I needed a bag big enough to fit all my gear, but that creates a situation where I can't take it on the plane as a carry-on and I need to find another solution to carry all my gear onto the plane because I can't be putting it into check luggage. So the solution to that problem is camera cubes and camera cubes like this one from Shimoda are padded and meant to be taken in and out of the bag so you can take it out and take it as a carry-on and that's one way to conveniently be able to carry as much gear as you need to in your main pack when you're using it as your main pack. But when you're checking your luggage for things like planes and trains, then you can take this out and use it as your carry-on. So moving on to the main pack. It's pretty heavy considering almost all of my camera gear is not in there. So this is the main bag. Starting on the outside, I've got my travel tripod. This is the Vanguard Neo. It's like basically the smallest and cheapest travel tripod that I could find. It was like 160 bucks and I'm not even sure I'm gonna need a tripod. So this is gonna do the job. Moving into the main pocket. So I won't spend too much time on this because what's left in this bag is basically just clothes and miscellaneous items, but I'll go over it briefly to give you an idea of how much I'm bringing. And I, I did have to pack pretty minimally in terms of clothing and other things in order to accommodate the amount of camera gear that I wanted to bring. So there is a little bit more camera gear in here, just my GoPro case. This has my GoPro, the charger, the batteries, and all the accessories that I need. So also in this pocket, I've got my Tevas. This is my second pair of shoes that I'm gonna be bringing. The other pair of shoes I'm gonna be wearing on the plane obviously and that's just a pair of running slash hiking shoes from Nike uh, they're made of Gore-Tex so they're waterproof I'm not gonna get into it too much and then I've got a packing cube this packing cube has got five pairs of underwear five pairs of socks one bathing suit one small pack towel and one large pack towel so I've got a second packing cube in here as well in here I've got my longer pants and sweaters I shouldn't say sweaters there's one sweater in here I've got one pair of pants uh, in addition to the pair of pants that I'm going to be wearing on the plane, I've got one belt, I've got one extra hat, it's like a sort of a bucket hat, in addition to the hat I'm going to be wearing on the plane, I've got one compressible windbreaker, and I have got one long sleeve t-shirt. So I think that's about it for this packing cube, and that's actually also it for this first entire compartment. This bag is split up into sort of two sections, it's got a bucket at the top and back loading compartment at the bottom. So. I'm actually going to be putting my camera cube in the bottom once I arrive and put my camera in there and then I'll rearrange where the clothes are going later. So moving on to the top compartment of this bag which is the bucket roll top. First off, I've got my toiletries. Not even going to bother going into this but all my toiletries fit in this bag. I've also got another packing cube in here. I have got for a few hours. So this is like my shorts and t-shirts packing cube. I've got in here four t-shirts, three pairs of shorts, two are like athletic shorts and one's like one nicer pair of shorts. And I've also got two tank tops in here. And then finally, the last thing in this compartment, this is what I'm calling the bag of miscellaneous items. So this is basically everything that I couldn't find another place for went into this packing cube because I didn't want it to just be loose somewhere else in the bag. In here I've got like my water bladder, I've got another GoPro accessory, got some of the sunglasses, got a headlamp, got a fork spoon knife kit that sort of goes together, more sunglasses, more cliff bars, and that's just about it. As a friend said to me recently, there's about a hundred percent chance that you'll forget something and I'm sure that's probably true but feels like I've got a lot of stuff here, but still I'm sure I'll learn as I go and hopefully my gear will change as I realize what I actually need. And on that note, I hope this video has been somewhat helpful. I know for me one of the biggest struggles when I was planning my trip was figuring out what gear to bring and how to pack it in my bag. So I hope if you're a photographer planning to go on a trip like this that maybe I saved you some of the same struggle that I went through. Anyway, I'm leaving in literally just a couple of hours so I've got to run, but if you're interested in checking out more videos like this, I'm going to be making videos all throughout my trip about the behind the scenes of my shoes, how I'm shooting while I travel, how I'm working with brands, and just updating you on my progress while I travel. So if you're interested in more videos like this one, definitely stay tuned. And like I said, I'm leaving in just a couple of hours so I've got to run and get all this stuff packed back up, but I'll see you guys in the next one.